اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربی شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل لقتدن من لسانی یفقہو قولی وی سٹارٹ ود ورس ایٹی فور آف سورہ الہود To the people of Madian, we send their brother Shu'eb. He said, O my people, worship Allah. You have no God but him. Do not give short measure and wait. Although I see you in prosperity today, I fear for you the scourge of a day that will encircle you. Now, Shu'eb was sent to the people of Madian and this place is situated nowadays in Jordan. And Shu'eb was a part of this nation. He gave the same message as the previous prophets that do not worship anyone but Allah. This shows that in every era of time, the basic deen has uh, remained the same. Or the basics or the foundations of deen have remained the same. What were human beings of all times taught that man realizes and accepts that Allah is his only Mabud and hence he bends before him and does not divert his attention towards anyone else regarding this aspect. That this importance which is the due right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should not be given to anyone else. After this basic message, the other important message to this nation was that do not give short measure and wait. Now we find that in these stories, apart from calling people towards Allah, the specific uh, faults of every nation were pinpointed. Like for example, the nation of Lut alayhi salam, they were pinpointed for homosexuality. Similarly, these people are targeted to not to indulge in the practice of of weighing and measuring less. They were a rich nation, believing in Allah, but their basic problem was that they considered that deen and dunya are two totally different affairs and they considered that uh, deen is between them and Allah, which has nothing to do with dunya. And they thought that in matters regarding trade, they were totally independent and they could do whatever they felt like. And this was no one else's business. And Shoaib alayhi salam tells them that although apparently this way you are gaining more money, but in the longer run, you would be a loser when you will have to give account of this cheating on the day of judgment. He is teaching them that deen is not just hukuk Allah but hukukul ibad as well. Verse 85, O my people, give full measure and weigh in all fairness. Do not defraud people of their goods and do not spread mischief in the land. Now in this verse, Shoaib a.s. reinforces the same message and categorically tells them what to do. Number one, give full measure. Mikyal includes those things which are measured, for example, inches, yards, meters, things which are measured. And number two, weigh in all fairness. Mizan relates to those things which are weighed, for example, in kilos, in tons, etc. And thirdly, the word tabkhusu relates to those things which are brought in counting, for example, one dozen, like someone puts 11 instead of 12 items. And tabkhusu has another meaning also. It includes taking someone's right or uh, that you are paid for a job and you don't complete the hours of the settled time or do not complete the work for which you are paid for. The end of the verse says that don't spread mischief on the land. Why is this being said? What has mischief got to do with it? Because when you devour someone else's right, then disorder or mischief is bound to occur. And we can see that most of the clashes and conflicts between people are because one has devoured the right of the other. Verse 86, what remains with Allah is better for you if you are true believers and I am not set up as a guardian over you. Now, the verse means that the wealth which is earned with halal means and with which the rights of uh, everyone is paid, then it will have baraka in it. And at the end of the verse, Shoaib says that I can only give you these 
valuable bits of advice and I'm not a guardian appointed to check you all the time. I'm not a policeman uh, that you are weighing correctly or weighing less. My job was to warn you simply. Verse 87, they said, O Shoeb, does your Salah command you that we give up all those deities whom our forefathers worshipped or that we have no right of doing what we like with our own uh, goods? For sure you are only uh, for sure you are the only gracious and righteous man left in the land now shoaib salam was f- very famous he was well known for two things number one that he was an eloquent speaker his eloquence of speech was exceptional and he went to its farthest limit in order to make his people understand. And we find in Hadith that he has been given the title, the title of Khatibul Ambiya. And secondly, uh, he was uh, a person known for uh, his love for Salat and he performed it with such beauty and devotedness that he was famous for it. Now, these people are attacking him with two taunts and talk to him sarcastically and say uh, that uh, this Salat of your teaches you that you go against the ways of what your forefathers have been doing. And they attack him from a point which are actually his qualities. And they say that, uh, and they say this is the typical taunt which people of Deen get these days also. Look at his namaz, look at the way he behaves, or we know what girls who wear hijab do, or look at your beard and, and look at what you are doing. People, first of all, target your deen or something related to deen rather than targeting the actual problem. Now, these people say to Shoaib salam that were our forefather fools, they knew nothing and you think that you are too smart. And then they give him the logic that this is our wealth. These are our belongings. And we have a right to maneuver it as we want. And then again, the word of taunt that you think that only you are pious and only what you say is the truth. And what do you think of yourself? Are you the only perfect person between us? Verse 88, he said, oh, my people, you see, if I have a clear sign from my Rabb, and he has given me good sustenance from himself. How can I then be a party to you, uh, to, to your evil and unlawful practices? I do not want to oppose you in what I am forbid, forbidding you. I desire nothing but to reform so far as I can manage. My success in this task depends entirely on the help of Allah. In him do I trust and to him do I turn for everything. Now, Shoaib salam says that, can't you see that? What I am trying to tell you is because Allah commanded me to do so. And my intention was never to oppose your forefathers. And Allah has given me Rizqan Hasanan. Here, Rizqan Hasanan means number one, prophethood, knowledge. Number two, halal risk. He means that your iman is based on the customs and rituals of your forefathers and the iman which I follow is the conscious active iman based on knowledge. And he says that whatever I am preaching to you, I practice it myself as well. It's not that I'm telling you to do it and I'm not doing it myself. Now from here we know the difference between these two kinds of iman the iman that is based on customs and rituals creates a difference between your speech and deeds but the conscious iman brings a collaboration between your speech and deeds for example we are born muslims but we find that the reverts are a much better muslim than us in word and deed because their iman is the conscious active iman so in short words salih alayhi salam is telling them that whatever i am telling you is not my own uh, 
but it is based on the command and knowledge of my rab it is based on proof and look that i am not just preaching but actually demonstrating what i am preaching with my practices and the basic agenda of my program is to set your dunya right by making you honest and making your akhira right by telling you to give hukuk ul ibad and at the end of the verse like every other prophet he shows total trust in allah an absolute tawakkul that the success of my mission is not in my hands it is entirely in allah's hands and control and i turn to him for everything meaning that nothing is my merit or my credit verse 89 oh my people let not my dispute with you bring upon you the doom similar to that of the people of nu or of hud or of sale nor are the people of lut far off from you now the point which is explained in this verse is that when you do dawa and pinpoint someone's fault then a time comes that people start hating you and they develop a prejudice what we call in our language zid with you and this is this zid that they go to the extent of disobeying allah i won't read namaz because you are telling us to do so i won't read the quran because this person i detest teaches it this is what shoaib alaihi salam is trying to explain to them that don't bother who is saying just see what he is saying and for the sake of your prejudice do not stake your akhira and your fate becomes like the people of nu hud and sale or lut alaihi salam this fate this verse is a grave warning for all such people who have this sort of an attitude towards deen verse 90 seek forgiveness of your rab and turn to him in repentance for my rab is indeed merciful affectionate then shoaib alaihi salam teaches them that now if you want to turn back to allah you want to connect to allah your tools are what istighfar and tauba then he connects them to allah with respect to two of his beautiful attributes rahim the most merciful and wadud the most loving and this is the trait of a true dai that he connects people to allah rather than himself to explain these qualities of allah hazrat umar razi allah taala no says that once some prisoners of war were brought to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and amongst them was a woman who had lost her baby and she was so desperate for her child that whenever she saw a baby she picked him up and started feeding him and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked us that can you expect that this woman can throw her own baby with her own hands into fire and we said never even if the baby is about to fall into the fire due to any other reason she will go ahead and try her utmost to save him and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah's mercy for his slaves is much more than the love she has for her baby allah never wants to punish his slaves but the condition is that they have to return to allah themselves imagine this is how allah loves us and we become bent upon our destruction by disobeying him so wastaghfiru rabbakum summa tubu ilayhi inna rabbi rahimun wadud how beautiful is this verse verse 91 they said o shoe we do not comprehend much of what you say in fact we see that you are a powerless person amongst among us were it not for your family we certainly would have stoned you for you are not strong enough to prevail against us now these people say that shoeb we really don't get what you are saying now why are they saying this when we can see that shoeb al salam is taking so much pains to explain everything to them so clearly the reason is that is that when you are not interested in something then you don't pay attention and you don't understand it as well the moment you are interested or keen on learning then even the most complicated things become clear now shoaib alaihi salam who is known as khatibul anbiya 
despite all his efforts people say that we do not understand what you are saying this shows their lack of interest now what exactly they mean by saying that we do not understand what you say is that this ethics you are teaching us about fairness about honesty in business dealings if we were to follow it our business would go flop the market is full of tough competition and if we don't implement our strategies what would we be earning and from where would we be eating so you keep all your saintly advices to yourself and this is a fact that when a person gets used to earning by unfair means then adopting fair means seemingly looks impossible then comes the second objection which is so typical that you have no status you have no position in society how can we believe in you and we forgive you because you belong to a respectable clan what we call baradri in our language otherwise you would have seen what we would have done to you there used to be no police at that time and all the matters which are controlled by the police they were controlled by the clan and these people say that if the support of your clan was not there we would have stoned you to death and what support are they talking about support uh, to these people instead of shoaib alay salam verse 92 he said oh my people do you regard my family to be more powerful than allah that you have disregarded him totally as a thing cast behind your back surely my rab encompasses all that you do now shoaib alay salam is not afraid of their threats and he says that what is wrong with you people you are afraid of the clan but not of allah and we find that this is exactly what is wrong with us today whenever we do, do anything wrong anything which is totally against the sharia against the quran against the sunnah we do them and say that we have to do it because it is done in my family so in other words the family or the baradri comes above allah just like it says in this verse that you have disregarded him totally as a thing cast behind your back now zubillah verse 93 oh my people you keep on doing your way and i shall keep up mine soon you will find out who receives the disgraceful punishment and who is a liar wait if you will i too am waiting with you now sick of them shoaib alay salam says that okay you keep on doing what you are doing and i will keep on doing what i am doing now what was he doing amar bil maruf and nahi anil munkar and he says that the outcome of both of us will determine that who is a liar or who is on the wrong path because obviously the liar will be punished so let us both wait and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create means which will uh, at one time manifest the truth verse 94 when our judgment came to pass we delivered shoaib alay salam and those who believed with him through our special mercy a mighty blast seized the wrong doers and they lay dead with their faces down in their homes by the morning so according to the divine practice shoaib alay salam and his followers were saved and they were taken out from that habitation and the rest of them were destroyed instantly at the harsh cry of jibril alay salam and just as shoaib alay salam had said that the final result sh- showed to the rest of the world that who was on the path of truth and who was on the path of error verse 95 as if they had never flourished there behold like samud gone are the people of samud in this verse we are told um, uh, about the punishment of the shrill cry in surah al araf we are told about the punishment of an earthquake on this nation and thirdly in surah ash shura the punishment of the cloud on this nation is mentioned now this these are not contradictions but an indications toward the fact that three different kinds of punishments came simultaneously on this nation they gathered under a canopy of clouds to save themselves from the heat and this canopy of clouds started showering fire on them at the same time the earth beneath them shook violently and then followed the shrill 
harsh cry that put an end to the whole story. Now, this sequence is assumed as possibly uh, it could have happened. Verse 96, we sent Musa with our signs and clear authority. Now starts the story of Musa a.s. He was sent with clear proofs. Now clear proofs or Sultanun Mubin here means the miracles which were given to Musa a.s. Like his stick which turned into a snake or his hand which turned shining white. Uh, so he was sent with convincing proofs. Verse 97, to Fir'aun and his chiefs, but they followed the command of Fir'aun and the command of Fir'aun was not right. Musa salam, was sent to Fir'aun and the elite of his nation. They followed Fir'aun rather than Musa salam. Why did they do so? Because in their opinion, Fir'aun was great. He had all the material strength and wealth and he was resourceful. He was powerful. And Musa salam, had none of those things. He had only the verses of Allah. Though he came with clear proofs and miracles, but these people were so blinded by falsehood that they could not see them. And another reason for obeying Firaun and refuting Musa salam, was that all these people who have been mentioned in this verse were office bearers of Pharaoh's government. They were high-ranking officials and although they were very well aware of Pharaoh's barbaric and ruthless strategies of governing his people, yet they remained quiet and they preferred to obey Pharaoh rather than Musa a.s. And this was the only option by which their posts and positions would remain intact. On the other hand, if Pharaoh goes, their power goes too. Verse 98, he will be in front of his people on the day of resurrection and will bring them down to the hell. How awful will be the place to which they will be brought. Now, a scene from the day of judgment is shown that on that day, this mighty Pharaoh will be empty handed. Walking in front of his nation, his nation will be following him reluctantly and this whole group leaded by Pharaoh would go into fire. So he was not just the leader in dunya, but their leader in akhirah as well. Now following or not following someone is an individual's person, personal choice in dunya. Man has equal chances to follow someone upright, someone pious or follow someone corrupt and evil. But in the Akhira, things would not be the same. An individual would be bound or forced to follow whom he followed in dunya and will consequently end up with him. Verse 99, a curse followed them in this life and a curse will follow them on the day of resurrection. What an evil reward for one to receive. Now these people have lost it in both the worlds because they have been cursed by Allah in this world as well as in the Akhirah. Being cursed means that they are removed from Allah's mercy. And why is it called an evil reward? Because there can be nothing worse than being removed from Allah's mercy. Verse 100, these are the stories of the nations which we relate to you of them. Some have survived and some have ceased to exist. Now Allah says that we are narrating to you ancient history of these prophet signs of some of them are wiped off totally like the people of Lut and Hudalai Musalam and signs of some remain like the signs of the people of Firon. Verse 101, we were not unjust to them, but they were unjust to themselves. And deities they invoked besides Allah did not avail them. When the judgment of Europe came to pass, they added nothing to their lot but complete destruction. Now the verse says that when the punishment or azab of Allah surrounded these nations and all the devis and deotas, the false gods and the people they called besides Allah could not come to their help. In fact, these very deities were the reason for the intensity of their azab. These people had thought that they would save them but actually they formed the base or the root cause of their 
punishment. Verse 102, such is the scourge of your rub. When he seizes a sinful town indeed, his seizing is terrible and painful. This means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on giving chances to the wrongdoers and these chances have two conditions attached to it. These two conditions are a requirement of Allah's justice. Number one, they are warned in every possible way with love, with care, with harshness, in every possible way. And number two is called itmam e hujjat It means that all the physical and practical proofs which would serve as an evidence in the court of Allah that yes, they were given every reason, yes, they were given every chance, yes, they were given every opportunity to believe in the truth, nothing worked and the capacity to re receive guidance is now fully and completely drained. Then the punishment from Allah descends and causes complete destruction. Verse 103, in fact, there is a sign in this. For those who fear the punishment of the hereafter, that is a day in which mankind will be gathered together and that will be a day of testimony. The verse says that these stories carry a lesson, but not for everyone, only for those people who have a fear of the Akhirah in them. We find that in the history of the world, these stories have not been narrated. And even if they are narrated, they don't show the points of Ibra. They just show stories. And what do people do? That all the, uh, all the punishments, somewhere it was an earthquake somewhere it was a flood or a blast or a windstorm these things keep occurring in the world and they try to prove that they were due to the geological environmental reasons they never think that it is a punishment from allah they present it in such a way that they do, they don't look like they don't appear like for uh, like a punishment for example research is being done on the area where the people of Lut salam lived and such things have come out from there which indicate that sometimes this area was exposed to intense heat they are busy finding out the geological reason but never think about the deeds which led to this azab thus eradicating all its effect and instead of Ibra, it has become an intellectual excitement for them. And it has become just a, a discovery for them. Verse 104, we do not delay it, but to the appointed deadline. Now, the verse means that do not think that the Qiyamah is very far off. It's not that far. It's not that far as you think, but it is about to come.